Hello, Minecrafters, and welcome back to Modded Minecraft, coming to you from the Kerpow Craft Kingdom server. My name is Tolbert, and I'm your host, and thanks for coming along. We're glad you could be with us. And, well, we're starting off here at this little, well, I say little, but it's 20 farm plots of wheat, along with our little micro wheat thing. I've spent the last five days, maybe even six days here, Harvesting wheat, using the micro farm to get even more wheat. Well, this is kind of simple design here. We have the two observers, redstone going. Hit the switch. Sticky piston pushes the observer up. And so it triggers the dispenser. And the dispenser is filled with bone meal. And it just bone meals the heck out of that little that little plot there. So we'll just go and flip that real quick. Boom, 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 boom. You can go ahead and see that happening, and well, that grows up pretty quickly. Well, the whole thing is, we needed a lot of wheat. I needed a lot of wheat. I mentioned it, or alluded to it, in the last video, that we're going to be working with a whole bunch of this stuff, and we have gotten a little bit over five shulker boxes full of hay bales. And a little bit before starting this recording, I had just finished preparing this area. We put in this little bit of a roof here and got all these posts up and whatnot. And out here is what we plan on working on with all of these hay bales. It's the fall season. Halloween is right around the corner. And every time growing up, Whenever I went to a haunted house, that haunted house was usually on like a uh, an apple orchard or something. And that apple orchard just about always had a corn maze. That's right, we're out here. And we're going to be building a corn maze for everybody on the server to enjoy. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with this little center area. Which we're going to use as a treasure room. That is to say, if you make your way to the middle. You can get out of the out of a chest here, a little bit of treasure. I figure we'll put maybe, I don't know, five gold coins. Five gold coins per person in the chest. So we'll be over here at the entrance. Is that you'll go ahead, you'll come inside the entrance, you'll deposit five copper, five copper coins to play. And then you're gonna hit a button. Oop, didn't mean to place that, but you're gonna hit a button like on the uh, on the hay bale here somewhere that's gonna activate a clock. Which reminds me, we're gonna need a little bit of an access hatch here. So we'll go ahead and dig down right here for right now. So this will be a nice little access hatch to the underneath here. Underneath here is where we're going to put a whole lot of red stony stuff. And we have these mega torches around to stop anything from spawning inside of the actual maze itself. So that is the whole point of that. So you're going to come in here, you're going to deposit your coins, you're going to hit the button, and then the timer is going to start. So one thing that we want to do here is we're going to have it set off into sections one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to put walls up like this and I guess it would help if I actually place these the right direction huh so we're going to put these up going all the way around so there's going to be that wall going all the way around here like so so that's what you're going to see from the outside and night times here let me go rest real quick and we'll be right back all right, so there we go. We went ahead, slept away the night, and got all the walls in throughout the entire outside of this thing. 
So what I was thinking is what we're going to do is we're going to have this kind of like in stages. Is that we're going to have like the first stage being the outer box, the second stage being an inner box, and the final stage being the middle. The middle being where the treasure is. So we're going to start. Now this is from these hay bales to the other hay bales all the way across is 99 blocks across. So the way I'm thinking is if we have the first stage or the first outer box being 18 blocks across. And best way to start that is going to be in a corner counting from the corner inwards. Will give us the from one corner to the other. So that corner is going to be one, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And then we're going to leave a two gap, and then that's where the other one's going to start. And the other one just goes all the way to the inside. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and get that basic setup done, and we'll get all of the uh, all of the walls set in. I will come back from there and then we'll go ahead and get to explaining how some things are going to work. All right, and so we got the basic walls set up in here. Like I said, these are just the base walls that we're going to be using. I left this area open just so that we can get a look at what things are going on here. And let's pop over to the map real quick. And whoa, that's really zoomed in. Okay. So if we take a look at this, we have the, the outer box which is going to be used. The reason for doing that, for reason for having an outer box and an inner box or whatnot, is so that when you come in, you can't do something like just following the right wall, which will eventually lead you to where you need to go. No, we want to make things a little bit more difficult, have a little bit more fun with it. So you have to find your way through the outer box in order to get to the inner box, and then find your way through the inner box to the treasure room. And so the treasure room, we're actually going to have three entrances for. So each one of these sides is going to be an entrance. And then on the back, back here is where we will actually put the treasure that you can collect. And this room, this is going to be the only room that is actually three tall, or the only area here, this is three tall. Every other area here is only going to be too tall. And well, the reason for that, you'll see that later on in the video. But that's the whole thing is we're going to have this three tall. Because there's going to be something special here. The rest of it's only too tall. The reason for the too tall is that we're going to do a couple of little tricky, cheaty things. In that we're gonna have little tripwire traps throughout the place. Now it's not gonna be anything too deadly. In fact, it's not gonna be deadly at all. All it's gonna be is stuff that'll be like hedge doors. So inside the hedge maze, you might come to an area like like this, and there'll be a tripwire hook across the middle. So as you come to try and get in, suddenly the doors close, and you can't get in. Suddenly you're stuck looking at hay bales so you gotta find a different way around that's kind of things we're gonna be doing here so let's go ahead and first let's set up our little timer system here that we're going to use to be controlling everything that's happening here all right so first things first let's go ahead and run the wires and whatnot for actually opening up the treasure area here and so we're going to want some sticky pistons at each of these entrances I'm only going to go too high here because outside of this it's only going to be too high because it's going to be something around the lines of that so we're going to have the two sticky pistons there so let's go ahead and get those set up all throughout the area here 
is two sticky pistons and the two barrel or two hay bales that are going to be used for this. And where they are, there they are. And so that sets that up, and then we need to take these into the underground. So if we actually going to use a block here, so that's where the redstone's going to come off of. And then we can take it from there down to here and then use that to bring it underneath there. So that's what we're going to do with that. So let's get that done all the way around. Like so. that side and one more to do all right that does that and i realize i don't have any actual redstone dust on me so let's grab some of that now let's use about five of those to make some redstone dust with Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that this is going to work when it's powered. I got to knock that one out for right now. So everything should be able to get fully powered here to the point where all these pistons, all because that redstone is running over that block, it's going to power that block and that piston so both should slide over and we're just going to double check and make sure that that's true all right so that's all of those let's pop back down below connect it all up power it and let's come back up and see how it works we're going to go ahead and run that this way that one and we'll run this one over as well except we don't want it connecting there we want it over just a little bit okay so if we throw down a redstone torch there actually might not be enough power here Or all of them and yeah we can see that it runs out here so we need to get some repeaters in here to throw power throughout the entire thing and we got quite a few so let's go right here and let's go let's say right here so if we pop back on up yep you can see both hay bales are moved over on each of these which is perfect exactly how we need it to look so now if we go ahead and grab the hay bales again we're going to be coming in here and covering all this up so that none the wiser about what's going on We're just going to cover things up like that as well. And nighttime is once again upon us. So let me go ahead and get all this covered up and then we'll be right back. All right, so all those are covered up. So now we have no idea exactly how to get into the treasure chamber here without things being activated here so we need to find a way to do a little timer here and what we're going to use we're going to use a classic pressure plate item drop timer that is i ran a little test the other day and items don't dissipate until about six minutes afterwards after they've been dropped so First of all, we're going to have to put in a stone button and mark that spot. So let's see if we can't get a stone button. I'm actually not too sure if I have any stone with me. 
Uh, it doesn't look like it. So let's go ahead and use Mr. Silk Touch here. Let's grab a piece of stone. We'll go ahead and make ourselves a stone button. And let's go put that where we need. I'm also going to need a little bit more redstone dust here. I'll grab that real quick. But let's go ahead and put that button up. Now let's go ahead and mark the spot where we're going to have that button for right now. It actually might change later. So we're going to put the button on this hay bale right here. We need to knock out that one and this one. So if we go ahead and put... Well, not so easy to put that hay bale back without a piece of grass there. So let me do that. I'll do that. I'll put the button there. I'll come back underneath here and knock out that one. All right, so what we need to do down here is we need to bring the signal down. So we'll go ahead and do something like that. Then we'll go ahead and throw a piece of redstone dust there, there, and there. And as I was saying, this is going to lead to a simple uh, dropper timer. Let me go ahead and throw that down and throw another one down and then put the dropper on top of that. Like so. All right, so now if we hit that button, we should hear that dropper go off. And we do. So we know the dropper goes off and it's going to drop an item onto this spot that has a wooden pressure plate on it. Wooden pressure plate being able to be worked or to be... Uh, De depressed by the item that's going to come out and I'm going to go ahead and use some glass to seal that up so that we can still see the item be dropped onto it right and so like that if this gets activated the item should drop and it should turn off this torch and this line is going to go all the way to where we have things set up right now for these doors. So we go ahead and connect right to that line, knock that torch out. We obviously have to put in some repeaters here to make sure everything works or everything stays powered. We go ahead and throw all those in. Okay, everything should you're a little bit short here. And we just barely need a little bit more power. Looks like we just barely need a little bit more power here. So one more repeater right there should be good. Okay, everything's powered there. Everything is powered there. And, well, let's just go ahead and head on up and make sure everything is powered. And we'll go ahead and see how this works. And make sure it works correctly here. So if we come on up, the inner part should still be completely inaccessible. We can't get through that one. Although something's not right there. We're missing a bit right there. Can't get through that one. And of course, can't get through this one. I'm suddenly thinking that that little bit there wasn't needed, but ah, that's okay. We'll go ahead and take a look at it later. So we come over here, we hit this button. And we should see that item floating there. The torch is now off which means we should be able to access the center treasure chamber now and we can already see we can that door looks like it's slid open so we can get inside now and every spot is good here and so that's going to run for about six and a half minutes roughly and then the door should close so let's go ahead and sit here and fast forward about six and a half minutes.
And there we go. About six and a half minutes have passed and the doors have closed. Which means that item that was down there on that pressure plate has despawned. And so everything should be now repowered again. And we can see it is. So now I want to grab a little tripwire hook and some string here because we're going to set up one of these things. Should have some tripwire hooks right there. And some string. Where do we have some string? Maybe we don't have some string. Nope. There, oh, one bit of string is not going to be enough. We need a little bit more string. But let me see if I have any in my chest here. I don't think I do. So we're going to have to go get some bits of string real quick. Yep, and so I'll be right back. All right, so I went and stole some string from Wapalus base there, and what we're going to do with that is we want to be able to use it to power some of this redstone here. So we're going to go ahead and bring this down a bit. We want the redstone to go roughly about there. So we want to make this entrance an exit only entrance. So let me go ahead and hit the button over here. Let's go ahead and drop down another block onto that uh, pressure plate. So we can see this thing being opened and unpowered right now. Right? And so let's go ahead and place a hay bale like that. Let's go ahead and put down tripwire hook. And of course we want that going across to another hidden hay bale across the way like so we'll throw down the tripwire hook take some of that string and put it across there and so that is just like that if we throw that piece of redstone there now it blocks it off but honestly I'd rather it be coming from that hay bale there because otherwise you can walk past it and get through it so we need to make it so that it comes from that particular hay bale. So if we knock some of this stuff out here. And throw that redstone across there. And now let's move this tripwire hook. So that it's right there. And let's see if we can't hide the other one a little bit better. Except that is not going to work how we need it to. So actually, if we knock that one out, let's try that. There, so now we can't get across it. Unfortunately, we lost the power of the second one there. Right, because of how that is. So let's see about... Oh, no, we want to keep that there. So let's do this. If I put that there and then that there, that should block that signal properly. There we go. We have both. So that's nice and hidden. So now it's, that is a one-way door only. Oh, we can't get in that way. We can only get out. But from the inside, we can get out without a problem. Although it does smack us for a quick second for not running. Let's just do that again. Yep, a quick smack, but that ain't no big deal. But the main thing is we can't get in now. So that's one little trickery that we're going to have going on here. It's those little trickery things that we're going to be doing. So right, go ahead and take all that up like that and that one on top of there. So now it's kind of hard to see what's going on there. You can see the holes. You really can't see what's happening. So you come on up and suddenly, oh, nope, can't get through that way. Nice and stuck. 
And so the, the one of the big things here is that we're not going to be able, or the players aren't going to be able to jump up in order to get through. Because like I said, everything's going to be only, only too high here. So you're not going to be able to really jump to get through. So that's going to be good and there. So now, now we're going to have to start filling the area in with the maze itself. And we'll get to that right now. And so I'll be back in just one second after the maze itself is pretty much fully built. I'm not going to be doing that on camera. I'm going to try to avoid showing that as much as possible so that other players, other people on the server, are not going to be able to use the map to try and get through this. So one, I'll have to disable the mini map there and then get this built. So I'll be back as soon as that's done. Except that I just saw something else I wanted to do. Is that here when you hit the button, I want like a little airlock area. I want what's back here to close and what's here to open. Right? As long as that timer's on, I want these op this side open, this side closed. So we're going to go ahead and take a couple sticky pistons. And we're going to throw those up right here. Put the hay bales on them like that. And so now we got to get power to this. Which honestly should not be that hard. If we do something like that. And we run a bit of redstone dust across this. I just want to double check, make sure that that will power it. And it's not. Maybe I got to take it up one more layer. So let's see, does that now power up? That does, okay, good. So that's kind of locking it there. And now we're also gonna do the same thing to the underneath. And so if we dig down here, we're gonna bring that power up there but it's got to be coming from this side not from the button side that's going to be very important so, all right let me get this door set up and put in we have these ones coming down so we're going to have these ones coming up so we're going to need some sticky pistons down there All right, just like that. And so I have to power those sticky pistons from here, I believe. I gotta get some more redstone dust. I gotta get this figured out. So give me a couple minutes, I'll be right back and then we'll continue with what we're working on here. All right, so there we go. We have the maze pretty much completely done on the inside, the maze itself. So you're gonna end up coming in here, you're gonna hit this button, and that's gonna give you about seven minutes, six and a half to seven minutes roughly to get through the entirety of the maze. We have a couple little things here and there to kind of mess you up a little bit. And if I can take off. One of the things we got is the one-way doors like this one right here you can't get past there's that one there there's one or two more in addition to that and we have a couple of other things here and there to make this a little bit confusing because you can't get out that way there's only a couple ways to get out 
and I turned off the mini map right now so that no one can see exactly how the maze goes but I'll end up turning or I'll put an image at the end of this so that you can see just exactly where the map or just exactly the mini map so you can see how to get out and whatnot so if anybody wants to be a little cheaty on it they can but I'll put that at the end of the video here. So now all I'm going to do is right on top of here. We're going to slab it over with birch wood slabs. So that you can't end up jumping more than just, just the, uh, the, little, the little bit there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. That's pretty much going to finish it for me. And so like I said, I'll put the mini map. I'll put a map at the end of the video. And... Hopefully, all the Kerpow Craftians will come in and have a good time. So until next time, everybody, take care, be well, and we will see you again shortly. Well now, what is Tolbert working on here? This looks like a bit of a corn maze. Well, we can't have it be all fun and games now, can we? No, not at all. What do you say we add a little bit of excitement? The good old skelly down there. And another skeleton friend right here. Except he kind of vanished on me. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. So let's try this again. There you go, buddy. And be named as Archer. All right. Two more skelly friends, shall we? One over here. So this time, let's make sure he can't get away. So that one's not carrying a bow. We need a skeleton with a bow. There we go. Hello, skelly friend. And I'll put one more out here. All right, that's four archers. What do you say we put a couple of zombies in here too? Why not? Right here looks like a good spot. I just wanna make sure he's not gonna burn while I do this. Let's go something like that. Now we can go ahead and drop him down there. Let's give him a name of guard. There we go. So he'll be wandering around trying to get to people. Let's put another one of those over on the other side here. Why not? Sounds fun. Exciting even. Let's go right here. Nope, oh, I guess not right there. There we go. So again, we'll do this to protect him from the sunlight. And let's just put him right there. And once again, your name is Guard. And now, the coup de gras. So here in the treasure room, we have the best for last. Mr. Witherskelly. You're not supposed to hit me, Mr. Witherskelly, but you are now treasure guardian. All right, we're all set here. Nothing else is needed but for to wait for them to have some fun.